Hi everybody. Um, I hope everybody's doing well. Um, I am too. Got it out today. Uh, well, later this early morning and into afternoon. I had to do some errands. But <clears throat> it was pretty good today, especially temperature wise. It was like 70s, 80s today. So I think the bad weather. Uh, actually helped it out a little bit more. But anyways, uh, no such news on COVID variant. They're still investigating it. Um, but they did say it's definitely worrisome to them. I don't know what could ha quite possibly happen. Um, but that's really what they're saying as of right now. Um, but... I guess they also said, I don't know if this uh, is new to anybody, but it's much more difficult to understand what type of symptoms might happen in the near future. And they're trying to investigate it still and do multiple studies with it over time. So I wonder what's going to happen as like I was saying before, in the fall and winter seasons with COVID, but seems like it's either going to get people sick and hospitalizations are going to go up, but nobody has said anything about, you know, increasing that since we've been out and about during summer and all this other stuff, but what can you do? So they were talking about the Venice Film Festival and... Um, there was a little bit of controversy with Adam Driver's comments about how Netflix and Amazon aren't really supportive of SAG-AFTRA, but yet smaller distribution companies are. And I thought that was pretty interesting for him to basically call them out on that because he, he tends to be more, uh, like he isn't like a superstar, but I think Star Wars made him into one and you know definitely Ridley Scott you know with House of Gucci and now we're starting to see more directors hire him now Michael Mann he was in that uh Enzo Ferrari Ferrari movie uh that just premiered at Venice I don't know what quite possibly could happen uh with that maybe they say that it's gonna be uh Oscar season awards maybe but with all these movies, like I was saying before, earlier, like, could uh, the strikes actually upend all these movies to be considered for Oscars? And it's definitely quite interesting, to say the least, to uh, know that that could actually happen. And that has never happened in, like, I think Oscars history whatsoever regarding, you know, the these union strikes and you know people have basically said uh through like the hollywood reporter and all these like entertainment film helps film websites and i just wonder what could uh happen in the near future about these things because it seems like you know um a lot of producers are like uh very like nervous there's also some of them that are not even signed up for interim agreements because they want to be open about you know distribution companies picking up their movie but like i said the interim agreements are not very um supportive of the studios i mean studios um unions that support like streamers and all this type of stuff so the streamers, uh, when Adam Driver said his comment, I bet you that was like very like a low gut moment. But Ferrari, I I believe was made independently uh, by Michael Mann. He didn't make his movie uh, normally through Universal or Warner Brothers, like he usually uh, does, because of course it's a time period movie. It's about the guy who did the Ferrari cars, Enzo Ferrari, and, you know, it's getting a lot of Oscar buzz, but, um, 
there's a lot of smaller, like, independent distributors who are, like, very supportive of his movie, like, Neon, that basically bought it and willing to, you know, distribute it. Like, Neon was also an important part of how Parasite won that, you know, South Korean movie uh, got the Oscar for Best Picture. And I wonder what's going to happen, like I said, with, you know, these union strikes and quite potentially uh, the um, COVID season. So it could really destroy Oscar season and it could de potentially delay a whole lot of movies into like um, later in 2024 or in 2025 because that's what happened with... The first season of COVID when that basically hit. And I just wonder what could happen in the long run when it comes to uh, the upcoming months. And quite potentially the upcoming year and a half and uh, into like 2025. So I don't know what quite possibly could happen. I mean, t to me, a lot of these streamer movies that are happening... Uh, they're being premiered in Toronto, uh, Venice, and I think Telluride. Telluride is also having their own film festival, which is in Colorado. And most definitely, I think it's going to get to the point of like either um, the streamers are going to have promotion bits from the actors like they're doing as of right now because of the union strikes. So... Not only that, I wonder what's going to happen with these movies that are trying to find distribution, especially through streamers, since we're s still having difficulties trying to find, you know, people willing to release these movies online. I mean, not online, through streaming services. Um, but yeah, I don't know what could quite possibly happen, but a lot of these streamers, unfortunately, like I was saying before, like their deals... That they were going to go ahead and do right before, you know, the strike happened or even occurred to them. And it's just like, so you're willing to give these people like a hundred million dollars to make a movie. Yet you still have layoffs. You're still, you know, getting rid of people. You're also getting rid of content a whole lot more. And it's like. If you don't believe in it and you keep wasting that type of money and green light stuff, then why why are they, you know, keep doing that to, you know, these certain movies that tend to be made on streaming services? I think David Fincher has his new movie called The Killer, which is based on a graphic novel, and that movie was made for get this. 175 million dollars and it stars Michael Fassbender who I wouldn't say has the the rock superstar status I mean he is definitely a star and he's a great actor um then it also stars Tilda Swinton uh the dragoness looking you know character actress that she is I mean I love her work I think she's amazing but but it's also David Fincher, because David Fincher has also directed Fight Club, The Girl with a Dragon Tattoo, um, Panic Room, uh, Gone Girl, like all these great movies. But he is very like, sort of like Stanley Kubrick. He wants to make uh, movies for multiple takes. I wouldn't say multiple, but several takes. Like his takes are up to like 50 50 takes. So, 175 million is definitely a David Fincher budget. But for an assassin movie like that, it's just, like, really ridiculous. Because it's like, these directors are so demanding with their budgets and probably their salaries, too. I'm not saying... Like, Michael Mann was also speaking about his Ferrari movie at the Venice Film Festival, and he basically forgo his you know, um, I guess usual fee. I don't know how much that usually costs for a director like him because he is like top notch in his game. But 
Michael Band tends to not make a whole lot of movies every couple of years. I mean, he definitely, I think his last movie, Black Hat, was pretty good. But um, he also wrote a book recently, Heat 2, that everybody's now talking about. And people are also speculating that they're going to actually make Heat, Heat 2 in a movie. So I don't know what's going to happen with that one. But back to David Fincher's uh, killer movie. Now, I believe it's having a premiere in Venice and I think Toronto. I'm not for sure because I don't really have the film festival roster in front of me. So, um, I do believe that because it's David Fincher, uh, you know, he tends to be very, um, like just any other Hollywood director demanding he wants more freedom and stuff like that and i believe he was on uh netflix for mind hunter that serial killer uh series i mean i did watch it it was it was pretty interesting but i no longer have netflix anymore uh because of my parents stuff going on and you know other stuff but i mean it was a great show don't get me wrong but that show wouldn't have been made regularly on TV because it's quite bloody uh, in a way. And it talks about previous serial killers and how they, you know, investigate them and try to catch them and all this other stuff. But, um, but it's based off a real guy who actually investigated these, you know, killers called Mind Hunter. Uh, he's a forensic psychologist or something like that he studies uh serial killers but uh getting back to david fincher like the budget for that movie is really really ridiculous especially when you have you know not a whole lot of a-list superstars in that particular movie i'm starting to see more often like the superstars in the smaller movies or even bigger budget movies for say like five million dollars or above and it's just them in the starting roles and then everybody else is sort of like um like a bunch of unknown actors who are willing to you know uh make a movie with them but you know 175 million dollars is definitely a whole lot of money for that type of movie and, of course, I understand that a lot of these directors demand bigger budgets and stuff like that. But in the long run, with the union strikes and the difficulties with streamings and these contracts that could in a war season. So, I wonder what's going to happen with all these budgets when, you know, the co contracts do end up being signed and uh, other type of stuff. That they might want to uh, do. Um, it's just very interesting. Because it's like you're already laying off people. You're getting rid of content that you already paid for. And you know, yes, Netflix has definitely a whole lot of people. But Amazon, you know, they're getting into the theatrical business. And now Apple is with Killers of Flower Moon. With a worldwide theatrical release so it seems like um like what is netflix gonna do with the killer just release it on streaming and hopefully make their money back because it's similar to like uh what was that one movie uh that the rock gal gadot ryan reynolds uh movie read something I forgot what it was, but, um, that's the thing. Like, how are they going to get their budgets back for these types of movies? Because if you look at Glass Onion, I mean, sure, it had Daniel Craig, Kate Hudson, and Dave Bautista, but it doesn't have, like, all these other stars that were in the Knives Out movie, but it's sort of like that movie was also made for a hundred million dollars. Because the director, writer, and Daniel Craig got, you know, paid a whole lot of money for that movie. So, I just wonder what's going to happen uh, for, 
you know, David Fincher's movie. Because, you know, I know that Netflix said that they weren't going to release theatrically, but it's just sort of like, what's going to happen with that particular movie because it's $175 million. But if you think about it, if people want to still go out and see it in the movie theater, or maybe they don't have Netflix at home, like similar to me, but it's like, why aren't they, you know, doing that? Because, you know... Ever since, I mean, of course, like I said before, I don't know what's going to happen in the coming fall, winter, and, you know, award season, and what's going to happen with these strikes, uh, what could potentially happen in the long-term uh, situation. So it just seems like, I think... Um, Like, the killer movie, yeah, Tilda Swin is definitely a great actress, but Michael Fassbender isn't, like, a superstar like uh, The Rock is. But David Fincher is, you know, very demanding when it comes to these things. And it also looks like it's not, like, a, you know, a big movie in a way. It doesn't have, like, a lot of superstars as you would expect with that type of budget. Like, $175 million is just, like, bonkers crazy because, like, I don't know how that usually works with those type of, you know, streaming movies. But like I said, you know, what could basically happen if the streamers, you know, lose a ton of money if people don't subscribe or, you know, start watching these movies? So, because, you know, Apple is really uh, kicking... Netflix's ass when it comes to theatrical but for Netflix not to do that is just like very weird but you know um I understand that they have a ton of money and they're trying to be like uh closing the wallet as a way or like um being frugal so it seems like um I don't know what might happen, but, you know, it just seems like $175 million is definitely a lot of money to basically waste. And it's just like the uh, the Rock and Ronald Reynolds and Gal Gadot movie that was made for like $225 million. And yet, you know, they, you know, they basically lost a lot of money in 2020. Uh, one in 2022, and they were laying off a few thousand people. I think it was like 7,000 people. But yeah, it's just really, really crazy that they're not actually going out and uh, releasing these movies theatrically because with these new contracts in sight and this war, this constant war with, you know, SAG, I just wonder what's going to potentially going to happen long term wise, even after these contracts are even signed too, because the ramifications could affect these studios and streamers that basically were affected by these strikes. So I just wonder what could quite possibly happen. But to be honest, like, um, a lot of these directors, sure, they're very demanding and they want the best and you know I get that they want big bu budget movies and I don't know if it's an ego thing out in Hollywood I'm sure it is but you know you do kind of wonder with with these things because it's sort of like you know why don't they you know try uh the budgets from their earlier films like doing I don't know, something for below $5 million or even a million dollars. Like, why don't these directors go back to the past and just make something incredibly small? And I think the reason for that being is that a lot of A-list superstars, their demands, salary demands, and, like, that's what they want. But I see a lot of, like, A-list superstars... They don't even try it. I think I said that in an earlier video. 
But that's the thing with all these, you know, superstar actors and directors. It's basically the same thing. It's very egotistical. And I understand that they want perfection and they want this, they want that. But it's just like, it's still not your your money. Now, if you look at Francis Ford Coppola, I don't know when he's going to release his movie. But I think it's below $100 million and he just got an interim agreement. So I wonder if it's going to be released at a, a film festival this year or maybe uh, the upcoming year. I mean, I don't actually know. But they were basically saying that. You know, you never actually know with these type of scenarios that uh, of what might actually happen. But a lot of these filmmakers and actors, like their constant demands of salaries and the biggest production budget, and it could hurt the studio and streamers, you know, uh, system. Especially since, you know, it might occur right after the SAG uh, gets together and forms a new contract. But it just feels like, you know, they're not taking certain precautions and they're not, like, actually understanding about uh, why a whole lot of these uh, big budget movies and streamer movies are going to be, you know, uh, failing at the box office because I really want to see what goes down with, you know, Killers of Flower Moon, you know, this coming, you know, month, you know, in October. And, you know, it's very, uh, uh, an interesting special case because that could derail Apple in the long run if Killers of Flower Moon, Napoleon, and Argyle, you know, end up failing. And they could lose a ton of money. So, <clears throat> excuse me, um, it's just not looking so good, uh, at a economic sense type of way. And, you know, I'm just being realistic because it could basically end up screwing up the whole entire studio and streamer system because that doesn't look good. Because these directors, I mean, these directors, I feel like they're, they're so used to it. They're so being, you know, demanding and they want this, they want that, you know, from their investors, from studios, from streamers. But it's just sort of like, you know, if you really want the best and you have that type of money and you're a multimillionaire, then why not go out and make your own movie instead of trying to battle these, you know executives all the time and say, oh, well, I can't get shit made anymore, or I had to make, wait, like, um, 10 to 20 to even 40 years trying to get a movie up and running because it was so difficult to make. But here's the thing. That's such old, utter bullshit because, you know, it's such a lie. It's such a manipulative lie because you're basically basking in your own glory, even though that the studios and streamers and these investors cater to your every single fucking need. And that's the thing with a lot of these egotistical, pompous-ass directors. I'm saying a whole lot of them are like that because that's what they want. They want perfection. I'm not saying that's bad, but in a way, it still doesn't belong to you. I mean, sure, you can own the title of it, but you have never actually financed a movie and, you know, uh, done something while you were in the trenches trying to build up your own career. And I just feel like they're not willing to do that. They're not willing to... I mean, sure, they probably had to do music videos or something else to try to get ahead in this, you know, L.A. Hollywood system. I totally not understand that. But at the same time, they don't own these movies financially through their production budgets. And that goes to actors, actresses, and filmmakers. It's just how it is. Because you could be unionized all you want, but at the same time, those studios and streamers and investors, if they pull in the money, then they own basically 
about 90% of production budgets of that particular movie. You don't know or even own that type of movie whatsoever. I mean, sure, you ha may have created something or uh, done something from a book, but that doesn't mean shit to anybody. Because on the realistic point of view, you're going to end up in a situation where, you know, these students and streamers keep pulling these failing movies all the time, no matter if they're PC, woke culture, or if it doesn't have that at all. So what could potentially happen uh, in the long run is that these movies and could end up failing at the box office or on streaming or whatever type of platform they're on. But it's not going to look good. Sure, you can have, you know, Oscar nominations and win awards and win Oscars, but that doesn't mean shit to, you know, the actual business side. Because if those studios end up dying, and most likely the streamers, and I'm not trying to be sound like a doomsday uh, prophet or whatever, but at the same time, you just never know what might happen in the coming months and upcoming, you know, two years. Now, I'm not saying this to sound like a, you know, um, I'm being mean or negative, but, you know, that's just the thing that might actually happen. So, a lot of these directors don't really go back and make lower budget movies like they used to do when they were much younger in this particular field. And I don't know if it's an ego thing or they probably just don't want to do that. But I would like to see, you know, some directors actually try out to go from these big budget movies to, you know, making something incredibly small without, you know, known stars. More like unknowns or maybe, uh, like, lower tier actors. I mean, you basically never know if you might find another, you know, movie star. But that's the thing. I don't think they're willing to, you know, at least try out to see what actually happens. Because they're so used to, you know, uh, this type of spending when it comes to, you know, bigger budget stuff. Because there's, I think a lot of these executives, um, they cater to every single one of their needs. But it's just kind of sort of like, if it was just me, and I was there you know, out in LA trying to, you know, make a name for myself, then it wouldn't have happened. But, you know, I feel like these, you know, filmmakers at least, you know, try to do something with their own money. I mean, since they have that type of money, like, why not, you know, even, like, try it? Like, if David Fincher would have made The Killer for not only, you know, 175 million bucks but to make it incredibly small like say i don't know 1.75 million dollars or um like 175 grand like that could quite possibly happen but i don't think that would have worked out especially with him because you know he wants that 50 take type of deal. And I totally get that. I don't know if other, you know, lower tier filmmakers or micro budget filmmakers have actually, you know, tried what Fincher actually does or all these other filmmakers that have certain amount of demands and try to, you know, do it on their, per I mean, on their particular sets. So I don't know. That's an interesting question that I do actually have because, you know, like I said, you just never know what might happen with these studios and streamers because if they end up going bankrupt or start losing a ton of money and um, not just that, but the potential fallout of COVID, you know, upcoming banks closing down, like I keep on saying all the time, they even said that Wells Fargo is having problems. So... It's just not looking so good. So I think these directors uh, and actors and 
actresses need to be more realistic when it comes to these things and start to realize, you know, like, um, they need to, you know, relate to their audiences who are basically paying for all their stuff. So, if you don't want a certain amount of people or you don't want to deal with, you know, these executives and trying to make a movie, then nobody is really actually stopping you for, you know, putting in your own money and making something like John Cassavetes did. Now, I haven't uh, seen a whole lot of mo uh, of his movies lately because uh, his movies tend to not be more classics than other filmmakers are. And it's quite, you know, sad to see. I know that he was an actor, but, you know, I would like to see, uh, you know, more filmmakers and actors sort of, like, become more like him. I mean, sure, he had G Gina Rollins, you know, who was his wife, but also, uh, he put her in, you know, some of his movies, because she is a great actress, but, you know, it's just quite sad, because I... I truly do believe that, you know, like I said, the studio and streamer system could end up going bankrupt. And if these filmmakers and actors and actresses aren't being well prepared for this real life scenario, because a lot of these inner, you know, other businesses and any type of industry are, you know, dealing with the same type of consequences because this overspending and spending a whole lot of fucking money over, you know, stupid shit that doesn't need to be made. But it's just like, if you keep greenlining stuff and you believe in the project, but yet, you know, you shit talk it once it's released and it, you know, gets bad reviews or people don't want to watch it in the movie theater or, you know, buy tickets or, uh, watching it on your, you know, particular streaming service. It just seems like, you know, it's, most definitely a time to uh, re-evaluate evaluate, uh, what you're uh, trying to do with your particular movies. But like I said, I feel like these, you know, filmmakers and these actors and actresses just really need to realize that you're not going to get a whole lot of money out of this union strikes. And I'm just being, you know, realistic and... Uh, sort of like economically wise about it because that's what's going to happen. And that's why I keep on saying about being self, um, you know, employed about these particular things. Instead of relying on, you know, the system or employers or uh, these studio heads, you know, it's just that if you're so tired of, you know, dealing with all this bullshit within this particular industry, to be honest, nobody's really stopping you. And I know that I'm probably going to get shit for this, but, you know, look at Kirk Cameron. Sure, he has his particular niche that he likes to work in, which is basically conservative family values and, you know, uh, his particular religion. I think it's Christianity or Catholic. I don't know. Um, but that's the thing. He goes through found events and, you know, he gets, you know, a few million dollars, even up to like $20 million. So I don't know why they're not achieving that sort of like ground at all, but yet they still are relying on the system. And I think it's just best that they actually try to, uh, make things work out when it comes to the independent side, because if the studios and streamers, Ended up, you know, uh, going bankrupt. Not saying that's going to happen. I don't have proof. But I'm just saying that in a realistic, economic-wise way of saying that it could eventually happen. Because everybody's talking about, you know, the downfall of the Hollywood CU system for many years. Even Spielberg and George Lucas has, you know, basically said it too. There would be an implosion of big budget movies and that could end up happening, not just for, you know, one particular year. It could be in, you know, the previous years before, because there's been, you know, other big budget movies that have failed too. So you never like, no, 
But going back to like um, what I was saying before about how I keep on seeing, you know, sometimes I see these like either one or two A-list stars in a particular movie. And it's just, they're basically surrounded by unknown stars. And I think that could end up happening if, you know, like I said, if all these other things come out in the open for fall, winter season, COVID, banks, inflation, all this other stuff, you know, uh, could there potentially be a shutdown? I mean, you just never know. And I think I talked about this, like, with one location type of movies. So, I think that could end up happening. So, I think it's time for everybody to realize that you need to, you know, check your spending uh, when it comes to your daily lives. But that's the thing. Telling all these rich people to go back to uh, what they were, you know, before they became superstars, it's just real really isn't going to happen, but it's preparing them for, uh, what could basically happen if there was to be a, uh, Hollywood studio implosion or some type of, uh, bankruptcy involving these studios and streamers, uh, during a difficult financial times that we are already in. So I think, uh, that needs to really happen. And Look at Sabian Fallen Hogan. She's a character actress now starring in her own movies through her uh, production company. And they were financed through a filmmaker that she worked with, you know, through his production company, basically overseas that, you know, finances them. Now, I don't know for like how much, but I think probably for like below two or uh, a half a million dollars. I don't know. I'm not for sure. But, you know, like I said, or look, look at Neil McDonough, um, who's starring in a Hitman book series, um, Redstone, Boone, all these other movies. And they were made for like 500 grand or more. So, Really, all these stars have basically no excuses. And then you look at Kirk Cameron and, you know, Kevin Sorbo and all these other people that believe in particular niches or political or, you know, religious values that they have. So, really, they could still make movies regardless. But, you know, when it comes to these Hollywood filmmakers and actors, it's going to get to the point where... uh studios and streamers probably will end up supporting them, but it's going to be a few of them per year if these movies keep, keep on, you know, uh, making, you know, less money at the box office when they have big budgets that they had to, uh, retain money back for. And that's just what happens, you know, but moving on, um, but like I said, I do want to see that more often. I want to, you know, see more stars do that. But I feel like they're not even trying. They're not even willing to do that. And that's just like really, really sad to me. Like, um, I'm seeing a lot of these stars like fall by the wayside, not saying that that's a bad thing, but they used to star in, like, big-budget movies. Now they're starring in, like, more independent stuff, which is fine, you know, whatever. Or they're starring in a, uh independent production company's movie that gets released through the CU system. And, hey, you know, uh, whatever fits best for them, you know, do that. But I just feel like it's not going to look so good in the coming year or two because of what's happening in the, you know, real world, you know, and I just believe that they're not willing to accept that. And I think a lot of these people, even, you know, probably their reps, not saying of all of them, but the reps are not probably telling them, you know, to do that, to be more cost effective and frugal with their money. So, like I said, caught, um, overspending and that sort of like deal. 
I think that just really hurts everybody within the studio system. So, in a way, um, even though that's not really my problem, I think that's what's going to happen on the long term. So, I don't know. We'll find out. Um, but back to, no, moving on, uh, from that particular subject, but, um, I was reading one of my books the other day, um, and it asked the question, what if someone gave you a million dollars, what would you do with it? Of course, you know, um, make movies with it, but would you make one or many movies with that particular mo money? And, you know, I think to myself, um, well, if this million dollars, does it have any strings attached? You know what I'm saying? Like, criminal activities and that type of stuff. I'm just saying, like, free one million dollar money. Like, not saying that's going to happen anytime soon. But what if someone, you know, actually gave you a million dollars? You know, that type of question. What would you do with that type of money? And it was basically asking it in one of my books. And uh, people have basically said either, you know, take care of themselves, pay their bills, you know, get a new house, get a new car, all that type of stuff. Um, how many movies would you make with that type of uh, money? And several of them basically said, oh, one. I'll just make one movie with that million dollars. But there was a, a few of them that basically said, yeah, I can make multiple movies with that sort of money, you know? You know, splitting it in half, sort of like becoming like slight financing in a way, like I keep on talking about. But that's the thing that nobody, I think, in this industry ever, you know, speaks about. Because oftentimes, I feel like, you know, these superstar actors... And like I said, there's a lot of un underrated, you know, actors and actresses that, you know, tend to not get a whole lot of work and they still have, you know, uh, appeal to them. They're still noticeable to people, even though that they don't star in a whole lot of like big budget stuff. But in this particular book, you know, um, they were saying, oh yeah, I, I would probably make one movie with that. But the only problem is, is that you're going to be dealing with the consequences of not fine, uh, you know, making another movie in case that movie basically fails with that sort of like money. If you think about it, because distribution is, you know, really, really hard. And there is that lady that I keep on talking about that she made a half a million dollar movie, 500 grand. And she took her romantic comedy, like, across the U.S. in a rented RV. And, you know, she only got back, like, 35 grand. And she still hasn't got back the rest of her budget in order to pay off her investors. So, with that in mind, I think the million dollar movie, uh, just for one particular film, is really not the way to go. I think it's to go multiple. Uh, take a certain amount of money off uh, that particular, you know, $1 million. But when I was talking about, you know, David Fincher's The Killer movie, how that was made for $175 million, that could have been made for $175 grand because there was a guy who was on one of the podcasts that I like to listen to. And basically, he um, basically made this little spy movie for a hundred grand. Of course, it didn't have the ultra-violent scenes in the killer movie like David Fincher has. But, you know, he's, he, he still made it. Like, regardless. Be because a production company decided to give him a hundred grand for that particular movie. But, of course, that particular company never did anything about the distribution uh, release of that particular movie, which is why I never, you know, hear anything about those sort of, like, cases, special cases that, you know, these movies get made for incredibly low budgets, and yet the company doesn't do anything about it 
there's no marketing, there's no distribution release, there's none of that. No press release, any of that. I mean, sure, you don't have a big, huge star in it, and I totally get that. But if you think about it, if that killer movie would have been made for 175 grand, and David Fincher made it on his own terms, and, you know, released it through his own money, he would have been like John Cassavetes, and he would have made maybe uh, millions of dollars with that particular, you know, movie and budget. But, um, like I said, you know, that million dollar question is definitely uh, an interesting one at that, because I do kind of, you know, not saying that's going to happen anytime soon, but, you know, um, that's what I would do because I can make any sort of type of movies with that type of budget, but I wouldn't like rent a whole lot of stuff. I wouldn't have like a studio or anything. I would just rent it when it's necessary in order to save money, but I would have to release these movies and market them through that particular, you know, $1 million. So you need to be sort of like creating your own particular strategies when it comes to, you know, making that particular uh, $1 million stand out for all these particular movies to be released. So that could end up happening. Not in my sort of situation. But if it did happen... I mean, holy shit, that would be great. But, you know, um, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. But um, that that's what I would do. I would not be, you know, lazy. I wouldn't be, like, egotistical and go on, like, Kickstarter and say, hey, I got a million dollars, but can you give me an additional million dollars? Or that's the thing. There's not a whole lot of rich people out there who are willing to you know, go on these crowdfunding campaigns and give people, like, I don't know, a couple thousand dollars or even a million dollars sometimes that people are talking about for uh, crowdfunding perks. But that's the thing. And that's why, you know, I think people need to, you know, start uh, these newer type of no-budget to micro-budget budgets for if you do get, like, a million dollars from an investor or multiple investors, but that would be the smart way to do it because, uh, that's what you need to do because what if all these production companies or studios and streamers end up, you know, uh, losing money and then they end up in bankruptcy court and you kind of don't want to go through that, but that's the thing. And in a way, I mean, sure. That would be great if it did happen to a lucky person or whoever that might be. But I'm just saying it as just a question to myself because, you know, I keep on thinking about that. Because before all this happened, like literally years ago, I would have been, hey, give me that million dollars. I would do, you know, great things with that. But, I mean, even years ago, I was, you know, thinking of doing multiple movies with that. But I was just like... Well, how do I do that if, you know, if I can't find distribution? Like, how do you market it? Especially, you know, with streaming and, like, social media platforms. How do you do that? Because nobody actually really talks about that, especially online. But nowadays, uh, they're actually, you know, speaking about that. And there are traditional distribution companies that do rely on micro-budget movies. But it's just like... What type of actors do you get involved with these type of movies? And that's that's the thing that I keep, you know, like, talking about. Because, you know, a lot of these agencies... And I'm not trying to be, like, um, negative or any aspect. But I think whenever I hear an actor or actress say, Oh, yeah, I want to start in these little tiny movies. Okay, great. Like, but for how much? Like, what's your pay rate? Because that needs to start happening, like, uh, IMDb for, you know, movie budgets, and they work with all these agencies all throughout Hollywood, but I do believe there's a independent, uh, 
uh, sort of like category or branch, no, not category, branch in that particular agency so they couldn't get, you know, movies financed, but within a certain uh, budget range. But I don't think they do like below 100 grand type of movies at all because they would be like, uh, yeah, use crowdfunding or whatever. We only use like, uh, you know, deal with rich people and, you know, bigger stars. So I don't think that would cover your, you know, particular budget um, because of salary demands, like I was saying before. But, you know, nobody ever talks about that. And, you know, I think it's time for, I think everybody, including independent filmmakers, they need to realize, realize that too. I mean, sure, you can look up to all these, you know, directors who get bigger budgets, but it's just sort of like, if you got a million dollars, would you make one movie or several movies with that type of uh, money? Like, that's the question that was asked, and, you know, that was just really interesting to read all these sort of, like, uh, particular answers when it comes to that, you know, question about it. Because I I wish that, you know, uh, if a particular, like, filmmaker actually got that certain event investment, like, what would they do with it? You know, that's the thing. I mean... To be honest, I would be really, really responsible for it as of right now, you know, with all this type of, you know, stuff going on. But in a way, I don't have to worry about any type of, like, another thing about this particular question is there going to be pressure from that particular investor. Like, are people going to be saying, what are you doing? That sort of like stuff. Are you be hands off approach? I think that's the particular way of, you know, letting me do my own thing and create stuff with your particular s support. Like, um, do they want to visit the set, like, every single day or whatever? But that would also put pressure on me, too, because I just feel like I don't know what to do in that sort of, like, scenario. Because that's what a lot of these filmmakers do. Too, because, you know, money is, you know, time. And I understand that. But it's sort of like if I got that particular uh, million dollars, then, hey, I, I would be, you know, making, you know, smaller movies with that type of budget. And that's what I was literally looking for uh, years ago before the pandemic, uh, because I was trying to, you know, like I said, investors, uh, in my previous video, like, that's the thing. Like, you can have, you know, rich family members, but they also have other stuff that they have to do. And, like, sure, I have rich neighbors, but that doesn't inherently mean that they're going to help me out with giving me a million dollar budget. But if someone actually did, I would be responsible and end up making several movies with that. But... Is it going to be a no pressure, hands off, you know, situation that of how I could just make uh, movies without, you know, people interfering with my work, you know? And that's the thing that I feel like uh, that could end up happening to a whole lot of filmmakers if they start, you know, making these little tiny movies. But another thing about it is, is that. Of course, like I said about before about the agents and, you know, categorizing their, you know, actors and actresses and saying, uh, what type of payment do you want? Sort of like, sort of like cameo in a way, like the, the perks, the price perks. Okay, that could actually work a whole lot more if you think about it, because that most definitely could end up. Because a lot of times I live, you know, far away from L.A., like I was saying before. So, if you think about it, there's so many filmmakers out there that have, you know, internet or maybe they don't. They just go to their local library or whatever, uh, their friend's house, neighbor's house, whatever, to, you know, get online. But you do kind of wonder if 
that could end up um, working, actually working if, say, a particular, like, Cameo IMD website with these agencies and the, all these actors are on there and they ask for, like, a particular amount of money within your particular budget range. And because most of the times, if you would have made a, a movie with just that million dollars, maybe you could get, like, a couple of big stars. But when it comes to, like, smaller movies, like below 100 grand or even 50 grand, then that's when a lot of these stars who are noticeable tend to not make those type of movies. And that's what I'm trying to say. So, I just feel like, you know, in a way, a lot of these stars don't really know how to do that because they're so used to the fact of, you know, people catering to their every need, including, you know, salary demands. So it just feels like, you know, they're not willing to, you know, accept that. So the $1 million question is like, uh, sort of like, you had to be responsible with that type of investment money. And that's what I would probably do. Because if I was given that type of money and I couldn't, you know, like help out my parents, but in a way I would get some of that money back. But that's the thing. Like, is it a no hands off, like, no pressure, no interference? Nothing like that. Just, like, letting me do my work and appreciate the fact that you are actually helping someone out by letting them create. And, like, literally years ago, I was, you know, before the pandemic, I was thinking about, you know, asking, you know, sending a letter to my rich neighbors and trying to figure out how do it, but, you know, I just couldn't, you know, do it because I thought about the legal consequences and it's just kind of like, you know, freaked me out because I don't have that sort of money to get a lawyer or whatever else. And I don't really have rich relatives that could help me, help me out either. I mean, sure, they do have money, but not like hundreds of thousands of dollars to give me, you know what I'm saying? So, um, I mean, sure, I did think about it, but it's just like, I live far away from all my family members, and that's the problem. And they have their own lives, they have their own jobs, they have babies and grandbabies to, you know, take care of, you know, their own kids, and I totally respect that. But it's just like, I never get to see them. And it's sort of like, you know, oh yeah, give me $20,000 to make my movie, even though I haven't seen you in a long time. It just feels, you know, very odd. Like, I understand. I mean, they also understand that I'm also going through stuff with trying to support my parents. But in a way, you know, if someone were to give me that million dollars, I would be, you know, totally, totally responsible. But there are certain limits of where, you know, there has to be no interference. You would totally support me no matter what. And if I may make a mistake, how would you react? Like, are you going to sue, sue me? And those type of ramifications that I keep on thinking about. You know, that's the thing. With, you know, these independent film filmmakers looking for, like, a few million dollars to make their first movie. And it's just like, you know excuse me, um, just not thinking, like, long-term at all, but that's the thing, is that, you know, of course, you know, unions and, uh, working with the actors' reps, um, that's another thing that I don't really know how to do, and, um, it's just, I wouldn't say scary, it's just, like, I'm thinking about the ramifications and consequences of it because that million dollars is a lot of money to me. I mean, really, it is. I mean, sure, it might be not a whole lot of money to most people, but at the same time, you know, of course, it's not like $500 million, right? But it's a million dollars, and what would you do with it? You know, you would have to be responsible, especially when someone, you know, gives you that type of money, and what would you do with it? And 
there's certain things that, like I said, like, I, I am afraid about the consequences of being, you know, given that sort of, like, money. Because there needs to be contracts that need to be signed. And, you know, it. but if you trust someone and you say, hey, here you go, here's a million dollars. But it's just like, are you going to be willing to stand up for uh, your, your prior... Uh, thoughts about giving someone like me or somebody else a million dollars and letting them, you know, create art, basically. Because making films, like I said, is uh, an expensive endeavor. So it's just like, what if that actually did happen? And unfortunately, I mean, sure, that never will happen. But, in a way, like, how would people react uh, to me actually doing something with that, with your own money, and there's no pressure, there's no interference, they just want you to be free of doing what you, what you love to do and just create. But, like I said, it's going to be really hard for me trying to find actors willing to, you know, star in movies for a specific amount of budget range, and that's the thing. But I understand, but I don't want to, you know, create just one specific movie with that million dollars. I'd rather create several with, you know, a really small budget or even a micro budget because it would be so much easier to make stuff and get money back. And then it's sort of like a slate that I keep on, you know, speaking about because that's the only way of, you know, continuously making movies and making money and how would that investor react if I made money off that particular budget like like I said what are the ramifications if there's not at all but that's the thing like a lot of these you know filmmakers who are you know a-listers uh what they went down to my level and nobody gave them anything anymore. Will they still create movies with their own money or not? Or just complain that nobody wants to give them shit anymore? I mean, that's something that is very interesting to me. But, you know, if someone were to give me a million dollars, I mean, hey, I would be really, really responsible. But you're not going to get superstar actors in those particular movies, like, at all. But I would make sure that... The genres are definitely marketable and can, you know, make a whole lot of money if they're willing to, you know, get something back in return or not at all. Because, you know, independent film is very risky, especially for investors putting in, say, a million dollars. But that's the thing. So, yeah. So, that's the million dollar question. But, anyways, um... I hope that you like what I had to say today. Also, I want to speak about the Cameo app thing. Unfortunately, I never heard back. I don't know how long it's going to take. But they haven't, like, emailed me back. I don't know what's happening. Like, their website is just really, really confusing. Because I'm trying to get on there. And it's just like, how do you get on there? If you have, you know, sign up as talent, but yet I already put in all my stuff and now they're, I guess, trying to investigate me or something to make sure I'm actually legitimate, like a real, uh, breathing human being, I guess, instead of like, I don't know, AI or something, but that's the thing. Anyways, um, yeah, so Cameo as of right now is not... Clearly working out. I haven't got any type of replies back from that previous email that they gave me. And it's sort of like, you know, if you email something to me and say, oh yeah, you're in consideration. And it's just like, well, how long is it going to take you? Because I'm not very patient, like, at all uh, when it comes to these things. But that's, that's all I can really say. And... I don't know if it's going to work out or maybe it will or maybe it won't, but hopefully it does, you know. 
Uh, like I said, just hoping and praying. Anyways, um, I want you guys to have a great day. Stay safe. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow or when I come back on here again. Anyways, see you later. Bye.